All right, in this lesson, we are talking about the marginal and the average tax rate calculations. And so we're gonna help you understand the formula to calculating them and hopefully give you some background and theory of why they're important to understand from a tax perspective. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is due to something called data analytics. And it's probably something that you've been hearing a lot about data analytics and how we're really taking data to make better decisions or help us make better decisions in the end. Well, we've been doing that for a long time when it comes to taxes and marginal and average tax rates those calculations are a form of data analytics. And so what is data analytics? If this is the first time you've ever heard of data analytics, well, data analytics is the study of data to make plausible connections and relationships between the data and the decision-making process. So we're given this data that we use to help us make decisions on various things like how we plan for the future, um, what machinery do we buy, what things we need to do now to avoid paying a ton of taxes later on. So we're given this data and then we have to sift through that data and try to figure out what are we gonna do next with it so it helps us make those decisions in the future. Now, data analytic tools are always used in taxation to help other people understand the meaning behind the tax numbers. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that in this next slide here. But what we're saying is that we typically like to use data analytics in taxation because it makes it easier to understand how taxes affect the ordinary taxpayer. And so we use these data analytic techniques to help give conceptual understanding to someone who doesn't understand taxes. Now the problem with that is they don't understand how these numbers can be manipulated at the end of the day. So we're gonna show you how that all works. So here's kind of an example of how we use data analytics in everyday speak to ordinary taxpayers. So in 2015, which is the latest tax picture that we have right now, the average tax rate by all individual tax returns filed and assessed was 13.5%. And how do we get 13.5%? Well, the US government expects to collect in 2015, $1.454 trillion of income tax. Now I say expects because there's still people now that haven't paid their 2015 tax returns yet. Um, and so they know this number. So $1.454 trillion of income tax owed in 2015 on how much income did these individuals earn collectively in the United States? $10.731 trillion. And so, uh, when we're trying to tell ordinary citizens what this average tax rate is, what the ordinary citizen is paying in taxes, we can throw a number like this out and say it's 13.5%. How do we get that? 1.454 trillion collected or will be collected out of 10.731 trillion dollars that was earned by US taxpayers. Now in today's world we love to throw out around these numbers or these analytics to hopefully give a context to the information that we're trying to provide. So that's why we're talking about this marginal and average tax rate. So the two main data analytic tools that we can use here are are the marginal tax rate as well as the average tax rate. So what is the marginal tax rate? Well, the marginal tax rate represents the portion of the tax that a taxpayer pays on the next, or we sometimes call last, dollar of taxable income. So what we're saying here is if you made one or more dollar how much in taxes would you pay for making that additional dollar? That's what marginal tax rate is. And so we've got a tax bracket here as an example, but it says here, assume a taxpayer has a taxable income of $36,500. What is the marginal tax rate for this taxpayer? So if I was to rewrite this questions in layman's terms, what we're asking is, what is the tax rate for the next available dollar that this taxpayer might 
earn. So we know that if we take 36,500 and we look at the tax bracket, they're in this tax bracket right here, and that's the 12%. So the question is, is if they made one more dollar, so if they made $36,501, what is that $1 going to be taxed at? Well, I can tell you from an ease standpoint, we can look back at the tax bracket and see that they would still be in the 12% tax bracket, which means they're still gonna have to pay 12%. So their marginal tax rate is 12%. Now, that's easy to understand, right? You have a tax bracket. You can go back and look at that tax bracket. If you add one more dollar, what tax bracket are they in? Well, this uh, person here is still in the 12% tax bracket, so their marginal tax rate is 12%. Now, let's look at this from a calculation standpoint so you better understand how this all works. So we've got the same example here, but I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna calculate the taxes for $36,500, and then I'm gonna calculate the taxes for $36,501, and then we're gonna compare those results. So we did some of this already, but we're gonna do it again here. So uh, for 36,500, I would get 20,000, which is the first tax bracket, times 10%, that gives me $2,000. Then I still haven't been taxed on the rest of it. So 36,500 minus $20,000, that would give you 16,500. The tax rate there is 12%. And so that would give you 1980 for a total of $30,980. So that's the status quo there. Let's do now, 36,501. If we did 36,501, still it's 20,000 at 10% because that's the first tax bracket. That would give you $2,000. And then we've got 36,501 minus 20,000 at $12, sorry, 12%. And if you did that calculation, you would get 19 80 and 12 cents. So if we add those together, we would get 39, 80 and 12 cents. So you're starting to get the drift here, right? So if we add one more dollar, their tax goes up by 12 cents. So let's look at this from a calculation standpoint to get to the point of what the marginal tax rate is. So the status quo, 36,500, we would get a tax of 39,000, sorry, $3,980. If they made 36,501, it would be $3,980.12, the difference being 12 cents. Now, if you want the actual calculation uh, formula for marginal tax rate, we would take the difference in taxes owed or paid, in this case, 12 cents, and we would divide it by the difference in taxable income. In this case, $1. 0.12 divided by one is 12, still 0.12 or 12%. So again, that matches what we just saw on a previous slide and what we said that we can just look at the tax bracket and see that they're still in the 12%. Now this can change. So this entire formula can change if the question says, what about if they started at 36,500 and they were thinking about taking a new job that uh, added $2,000 more to their income with their marginal tax rate on that $2,000. You could still do this calculation that I just did here to see whether it is still 12% or if it goes up. Now, where it would go up or where you're gonna have a little bit of an issue is if it leaps a tax bracket. So for instance, let's just say the original question was 18,000, their new job pays them 22,000, so there's a $4,000 increase in their income, what's the marginal tax rate? Well, the first 2,000 would be 10% because that would get you to 20,000, and the next 2,000 would be at 12%. So then you're gonna need to do some math, and when you do this math that I just showed you in the last two slides here, you're gonna get something like 11%. So the marginal tax rate for that person is 11%, not 10, not 12, because that difference, that $4,000 difference leaps 
two brackets, okay? So it leaps two brackets. So that's how you would calculate it if you got a little bit of a confusing question there. But generally speaking, if it doesn't say that they're leaping that much, if they're only leaping by $1, then you can pretty much go to the tax bracket and figure that out. But in this case, 12%. So that gives us our marginal tax rates. Let's take a look at our average tax rate. So the average tax rate represents the percentage of taxes paid by a taxpayer when compared to a certain amount of taxable income. So it is truly an average. What are you averagely paying on your taxable income? Now, the average typically represents something called a blended rate, especially when tax brackets occur. So if it goes through multiple tax brackets, it's basically the average of all of those tax brackets put together based on a weight of the tax base. So the calculation for average tax rate is your total tax liability divided by your total taxable income. And so that's how we calculate it. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example to help you better understand average tax rate. So again, assume a taxpayer has taxable income of $36,500. What is the average tax rate for this taxpayer? Again, we're just going to solve this again, just so that you have more practice. $20,000 times 10%, $2,000. The second tax bracket, we're going to max out at 36,500 minus 20,000. So 16,500 over that 10% tax bracket. So that's going to be taxed at 12%. We get 1980 for a total tax liability of $30,980. Now we're ready to calculate the average tax rate. So the total tax liability here is $3,980. Their taxable income was $36,500, and that would give you 10.9%. So here's the, the crux of this example here is they are in the 12% tax bracket, but because some of their money is taxed at 10% instead of 12%, it brings down their marginal tax rate to a point where it's in between the 10 and the 12%, which we, we would get is 10.9%. And that's true for pretty much any taxpayer, unless you're in the 10% tax bracket, is typically the marginal tax rate is higher than the average because the average takes into account those 10, 12, 22, and 24% tax brackets that the marginal is not. So easy calculation here, you find the tax liability and then divide it by the total taxable income. So that's kind of how we calculate marginal and average tax rate. And now that you understand what components go into marginal and average tax rate, the next time you hear a newspaper or a news a TV show or anybody talk about average or marginal tax rate, you now have a better idea of how that is really calculated. So we'll see you in the next video.